I would love to be guided through, like, doing that, like, consistently. Like, let's say I'm in a contrasting situation. For example, simple one. Uh, woke up in the morning, been traveling, flying, you know, and not sleeping. And then you get up and you're like, oh, no. You know, like, you're kind of in a place, which I'm not in that place now, but... I still feel the essence of who I am and everything. Depleted? Depleted. In that experience that you're describing? Yeah. Well, that's what we were talking about. If you're not going back to the replenishing well, then you get depleted. And if you're looking for others for replenishment, you always get depleted. And so you've got to go to the good feeling thoughts for replenishment. It really is only that. So let's take that situation. Let's calibrate it. You've been traveling. You've been doing your thing. And... You didn't say the word, but we felt it in your vibration. You've been sacrificing. You've been doing what needed to be done for the good of whatever, whatever, whatever. And there's been some resentment going on, some pleasure too, but some resentment going on and an awareness that from your point of view, you're giving too much for what you're getting back. That's the vibration that we felt from you there. Accurate? Yeah, you can't lie up here, I'll tell you. <laughs> so. You sort of got worn out and then you awakened now you awakened into a day that wasn't demanding that much of you so you could sort of play it however you wanted but you're so accustomed to pleasing others and playing that sacrificial role that you started doing it even though this was a day you could have totally replenished if you would have given yourself a chance to do that and there was no one else making serious demands on you it's just your habit of making demands on yourself and so that's the situation and you feel depleted and you feel discouraged and you feel taken advantage of and you feel like you're sacrificing and you feel like life should be more fun than it's been being and you feel like you're not getting your fair share you feel like you're putting out more effort than you're getting back and something's jacked up here and you're the only one who has ever felt that way yeah. <laughs> There's resonating all over the room here. So you've written that on that side of the page and now you're asking yourself the question, this is how my recent involvement in what I do has been making me feel. And especially some key relationships have been making me feel that way. So this is a situation that I'm calibrating to. But if I am able to set that situation aside just for a moment, and I can think about how I dominantly feel about life. Is it worth living or not? Hell yes. We're channeling you. Hell yes. <laughs> Am I eager about life or discouraged about life? I'm eager. You are. There's no question about that. Do I feel like there's so much to give and get? Or do I feel like it's all sort of useless and wasted? There's so much to give and get. Do I feel that I can be empowered by the engines and forces and laws of the universe? Or have I got to muster it all up on my own? No, I'm supported. There's so much evidence of the support of the universe. I just have to sync with it. Do I know how to sync with it or am I flying blind here? I know how to sync with it. Do I often sync with it? Yes, I do. That's all that it takes. Now you're calibrated back with what you really know and who you really are. And your inner being is joyous in your acknowledgement of what your inner being already knows. And now you're in the replenishing mode, not the deprivation mode. And in the replenishing, you're feeling yourself coming back to life. Ideas about maybe what you'd like to do start coming to you. You want to get up and go get something to eat. Everything shifts because you shift it. Yeah. 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 It, what goes through my brain is like this side starts weighing things out and I'm like, okay, cause I can feel that. Like I can feel that ease. And when you said the universe, the support of the universe, like all these cooperative components are in place. I felt this instant ease. But the bottom line is here. You got to do the work. And we know you do in yep. many regards, but you got to do the work. And now this work is elevated to another level of understanding within you. You now know about calibration and you now know that you can be under the influence. In other words, letting some situation calibrate you 
or you can be under the influence of your source and calibrating to that you can be calibrating to your desires or to your bogus beliefs you can be calibrating to your strengths or you can be calibrating to your weaknesses you can be calibrating to your desires or to your fears it's your choice but you've got to do the work and this is what we want you to hear above all other things that you've heard from us here today when you calibrate you get out ahead of it it's like setting your point of attraction it would be like no analogies are perfect and this one is troubling on many levels but hear it anyway it would be like you have a little calibration knob it's about right here and you're turning it to grouchy people or happy people <laughs> now we're serious about this and then you say okay grouchy people off I go and now your point of attraction is for grouchy people you shouldn't be shocked <laughs> grouchy person after grouchy person just shows up in your experience if you can acknowledge in our silly analogy that you turned the knob before you went out there and met them you calibrated because law of attraction never makes a mistake you never receive an experience that is other than what you've calibrated now you can say and we believe and understand and sympathize to some extent the situation calibrated me I didn't mean to do it we get that or I got calibrated when I was really young and I've been doing the same thing ever since we get that too but now you know too much now you know too much now you know that you are an extension of source energy and that source energy is calibrated to success beyond Esther's ability to even describe it to you you see so you just got to stop being lazy and sloppy in your thinking and get out ahead of it now get out ahead of it 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 that sounds nice but if you're tumbling down the ski slope rolling in the snow and someone yells stop you're not gonna stop and in the same way you're not gonna get out ahead of it when you're living the results of previous calibration so you have to find somewhere in there a reason to see things differently that's the reason you sleep really you recalibrate when you sleep and you have a tremendous opportunity to focus differently when you awaken if you would but your tendency is to talk about what's been going on and to face reality and often you wake up in a similar environment that you went to sleep in and so you usually don't make any deliberate attention toward calibrating to something that you really want most of you let your environment calibrate you we've been saying this to you for a long long time most people offer most of their vibration in response to what they are observing and so what we're asking you to do is stop letting your observing with your physical senses what you're seeing and hearing and smelling and tasting and touching let that not be the observation that matters most to you for a little while and let your emotional observation be what matters most to you start observing what's in the ether start observing what's in your vortex start observing what your inner being knows start observing who you really are well how do you observe something that hasn't manifested yet do you use your eyes no use your sonar use your emotional sonar in other words it's a vibrational sensor that lets you know use your ability to see in the dark use your ability to see what is not yet manifested airplanes fly all the time and they can't see where they're going but they're using sensors so that they know where they are in relationship to where they want to be you've got that you have emotional sonar you can tell if it feels good keep going that way if it feels bad Hmm, make some new decisions about the direction that you're pointed you see what we're getting at of course you do it's so obvious you know too much to slip back into the complacency of just regurgitating what is so somebody comes up to you because they're part of your gravitational pool because you've been thinking about them and they present to you what they usually present but you are now different you're now different so you can now commiserate with them you can seek harmony with them you can try to get them to understand that you understand what they understand if you want to or you can feel the offness of it and you can just give them a welcome smile and understand where they are and say you know I got to get going I got some stuff going on I got some stuff going on don't let yourself get sucked in to what sucks the minute you get sucked in the minute you get sucked into it it doesn't feel good and you know it do something about it 
don't get sucked in don't let yourself go where sometimes it's the easiest place to go you know too much you see you know too much so what happens for a while is people that are used to you going there with them are going to be offended when you don't go because they've been calibrating to your appreciation of them they like it when you agree with them that they're right in their dysfunction they like it when they complain to you and you give them a shoulder to cry on they do like it but why calibrate to their problems when in your vortex because you love them is a solution to their problems one mother said to us as we delivered something sort of like this to her one day she said but my son will feel like I am forsaking him we said how could he feel that way when your undivided attention is upon everything that he wants that you want for him to have how could he feel forsaken when you're believing in him when you're believing that things can get better how could he feel forsaken when you're just not willing to cry and moan and complain with him but instead you're talking and thinking about where he's going and who he really is he's not gonna feel forsaken that's just a lazy excuse that you're offering because it's easier for you to see him like he is than like he wants to be because you count too much on your physical senses looking back isn't fun it'd be like driving down the road and spending your whole time looking in the rearview mirror you're missing a whole lot of things and you're probably running over a lot of things too <laughs> helpful that's helpful it's funny you mentioned my son because that's a similar thing exactly it's like I'll be in my space and he'll literally get mad at me when I don't go there with him because I'm doing that kind of thing where there's like a friction that happens and so we hear you yeah but it doesn't have to be that way if you get out ahead of it and how do you get out ahead of it you get out ahead of it by meditating and connecting to who you are that's how you get out ahead of it you get out ahead of it by segment intending by looking for things right here and now on this side of the book that feel good to you when you look at them by activating within yourself a vibration of who you are by owning the moment and when you own the moment and you walk into a room it doesn't matter where somebody else is you can own the moment but if you walk into a room and he gets you then you aren't owning the moment he is and the thing that is so bogus about that is that he's owning the moment without being connected to source energy <laughs> totally which means you were nowhere near connected if someone can get your goat that easily you were not in your power and that's what they're demonstrating to you and so you guys can all fight it out with each other I'm right no you're right no I'm right no I'm right no you're wrong no I'm right you can fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and never get to the bottom of that that never gets you anywhere what you want is to find the best in them and if you're doing anything other than that then you're not who you are then you're mad at them there are so many people who just won't go to the trouble of being better so you can feel better when you look at them if you would just do better and be better if you just be better then I would feel better <laughs> and the whole world is sort of crumbling under the weight of that responsibility because it defies the laws of the universe you don't have to be better for me to feel better unless I care what you think and if you're not better and I feel better and then you don't like me because I feel better because you want me to suffer now that's the quagmire everyone's in isn't it I got to feel as bad as you feel or you'll be mad at me really you can feel bad all day and you know what your inner being is never mad at you but I've been loving him a lot like your crazy inner lately I, he'll have he'll be having a bad day and I just like I won't I'm just gonna love him and I find simple little things to look at in his vibration and in his his little ways little hair well, you're telling like a different story now yeah that's not the story you told to us that evoked that other story from us <laughs> I'm saying I'm doing the work yeah. sometimes you are yeah. mostly you're not yeah <laughs> just like everybody else yeah no, that's mostly cool. you're not mostly you are calibrating to what's surrounding you and occasionally you do the work and that's the problem yeah. now that you've done some of the work you know better now that you've done the work now that you've tasted the sweetness of connection you can't stand it when it's not there but you got to stop blaming other people for the misery that you're living when you're not there I'm not blaming him I mean it's this is all coming from me you're fun to play with and we want you to go now thank you <laughs> <laughs>